Hello ladies and gentlemen, Scare Tool here bringing you another Minecraft Modern Warfare vehicle tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be going ahead and doing a redesign for the PT-91 Thrade. The PT-91 Thrade is a Polish main battle tank. A development of the T-72M1 first entered service in 1995. The PT-91 was designed at the Obram, uh, which is basically the Polish Research and Development Center for Mechanical Appliances. It was produced by Brummer, uh, Lebedee Company, a part of the Brummer Group, a Polish technical military consortium. Changes from the T-72 include a new dual-axis stabilized fire control system, reactive armor, a more powerful engine, transmission, and new automatic loader. Unlike many other T-72 upgrades, the Polish Army PT-91s are upgraded using elements created almost exclusively by domestic companies, including a new engine, the fire control system, and all communication system equipment. Many of those elements were used by upgrading um, existing fleets of T-72 tanks in countries including the Czech Republic, Georgia, and India. A total of 232 PT-91 tanks were delivered to the Polish land forces, 92 newly built vehicles, and 140 from T-72A and T-72M1 tanks, designated the PT-91M1 and the PT-91MA1, respectively. So yeah, the PT-91 authority here, a very uh, interesting uh, tank here. Again, kind of that whole Eastern European design of taking basically Soviet tanks and pretty much making them our own. We're currently seeing very similar tanks like that being used in the uh, Ukraine-Russian war, and the Polish here are basically no exception to basically being uh, just like Ukraine, kind of making their own versions to upgrade the T-72, which is such a versatile platform to uh, basically survive, be more survivable and more um, combative in more kind of uh, advancing, you know, technological warfare. Um, so yeah, the PT-91 here, very cool design. I also like the Polish idea of making all their products domestically for this tank, which makes a lot of sense, especially during war where uh, sanctions and stuff like that could really cripple and a economy and especially cripple the import of uh, parts necessary to maintain these tanks in case of a war. Very important to have your own uh, supply, so good on the Polish for doing that, but yeah, really cool tank here, and um, a tank that is, uh, I think, pretty much really the only main battle tank really serving with uh, the Polish. I could be completely wrong, but uh, as far as my knowledge is, really the PT-91 is their main battle tank um, they're using, and probably eventually will upgrade the Leopards or something of that sort if they follow the footsteps of any of their um, European countries. But yeah, overall, really cool build, and really excited to kind of finally do a redesign for this uh, build, as the whole design for this tank dates back all the way to almost 2016, I think, so very old design, and very desperately in need of a redesign, so happy to kind of come back and revisit this tank, and uh, it's been a long time since we've actually done anything Polish as well, so also good to revisit Poland. Um, so with that, let's go ahead and dive in here to take a look at the PT-91, and um kind of seeing exactly what we're we'll building. So this year, basically using my T-72 chassis, so pretty much the same chassis um, you've seen used a lot recently, especially with the T-72 AMT we did recently. Um, but yeah, this right here is basically the same chassis, so nothing too crazy going on there. Um, just some changes here in the side armor, which has more of that reactive armor on the sides, as well as the turret here. You can see it's a lot more kind of uh, boxed off um, or rounded out instead of having, you know, kind of the standard T-72 turret. So this reactive armor here helps kind of eliminate some weak spots and again provide some more uh, protection there to the crew. And then we have some also uh, some um, reactive armor here on the front of the vehicle as well. Again, trying to give that extra um, you know survivability to these um, aging tanks. As we uh, progress further back, we have obviously the 175 or 125 millimeter gun. Uh, this tank also uh, has pretty big smoke dis dispensers on the sides here, so very similar to that of the Ukrainian uh, T-72 AMT. We then have uh, the little optics box, which is um, definitely pretty big. It definitely stands out. I think this kind of makes the authority a little bit more recognizable. Is this uh, big giant optics um, kind of section on the left side of the turret, which is uh, not really present on any of the other T-72 um, variants. So kind of cool there. We have obviously the Dishka machine gun here, again that heavy Russian influence, the um, machine gun still you in use, and we then have uh, basically a bunch of storage here around the back of the turret, so again pretty similar to other T-72 variants. On the back here, pretty much the same thing um, across the board, just some, uh, you know, over the engine kind of uh, details, stuff like that, all your vents and all that stuff, and of course on the back here we have the spare, um, you know, fuel um, tanks here, and also... 
um, unditching log there on the bottom. So uh, overall, that's pretty much the build. Um, pretty straightforward, very similar to other T-72 variants, but again, you know, it's kind of its own little thing and uh, definitely a little unique and does stand out. But yeah, nice to revisit Poland and give them a nice uh, new refresh for their uh, main battle tank. But without further ado, let's go and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer, layer number one. All right, guys, so moving into our first layer, we're going to go and start with layer one here. For layer one, go ahead and get started with we're going to place down two near brick slabs here and two near brick top slabs coming off those slabs like so. We're going to go then place down two black shulker boxes back to back like so. And then after that, we're going to place down two polished blacks downstairs and there are two right behind them. Again, we're going to place our two black shulker boxes back to back. Again, two polished blocks downstairs. There are two on the back. Same thing here. And then again, two polished blocks downstairs. And there are two right here. And after that, we're going to go ahead and place down two narrow brick slabs and two narrow brick top slabs like that going back. Once we have that done, we're going to take our dark oak weighted slabs. We're going to place down one, two, three across this back section here. An item frame on the two side slabs. And then we're going to place down a tripwire hook in the item frame and rotate it so it's facing downwards like so. After that, going back up to the front here, we're going to go ahead and place down a row of dark oak trap doors. A row of three, going over from that, those slabs there. And then from this narrow brick slab here, a row of three of dark oak wood top slabs. We then want to fill in the rows of uh, dark oak wood top slabs, basically connecting the front to the back here. And this is going to basically just create the bottom here of the hole of your tank. So like that. And then we want to go and do the same design we did on that side over here to the, for the tracks. So again, we're just going to replicate the same design on both sides. So just like this, all the way down. And again, um, it's the same thing on both sides, so I'm not going to go ahead and explain it in super good detail. I'm going to do it a little bit quicker here. Again, as it's uh, on the other side there, you can just look at the other side if you do need to. But once you have both sides complete, this is what you should have basically for um, what we have so far. To go ahead and add more detail to this build, we are going to go and take item frames. We're going to place them down on the black shulker boxes, and we're going to go and then place down green stained glass paints in those item frames. If you're on Java, we can also go the extra step of placing down a dark oak wood button on the side of the stroker boxes as well. Now, do note that if you are on Java, you're able to do this feature. If you're on a different version, such as Pocket Edition or Bedrock, you will not be able to place down item frames and um, buttons in the same block space. So you have to pick and choose between which you prefer. Obviously, I will recommend the item frame with the green stained glass over the button. That's just personal preference, but I think it fits the build a lot better. And especially what we're going to do next, it's going to obviously uh, look a lot better overall with the vehicle and we're just going to do the same thing over here on this side as well so just like that and not like that like that and after we have that all done we do have some banners we're going to go ahead and make real quick so i'm going to go ahead and grab the necessary materials for those banners and i'll see you guys here shortly to go ahead and make them all right guys so when it comes to making our banners here for our wheels pretty simple and straightforward stuff we're going to do here uh, we're going to need two green banners and four black dye we're going to start off by going ahead and going into our loom. We're going to place our green banners in our black die. We're going to go ahead and do a line horizontally through the center for both banners. So just like that. Then we want to go ahead and place down each banner back into the loom. And we're going to split it in half vertically. So we're going to have the black on the left side here for one banner. And the black on the right side for the other. So just like that. And you get these two banners that look just like this. Now these banners here will be placed on the polished black stone stairs. With the green portion facing toward each other. And what this does here is it kind of helps create a little bit more wheel spacing, but show our wheels and where they're located on the build. Just a kind of nice technique there to kind of really help make this look a little bit better rather than just having those stairs there, which can look a little ugly at times. Um, so all right, there's pretty much um, what we're going to do for that. And the last thing we have to do for this layer is we're going to go and grab green banners and we're just going to place down three green banners here across the front there of the build on those dark oak trap doors. Anyways, though, with that all out of the way, that is going to wrap up layer one. And with that, let's move on up to layer number two. Alright guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer number two. For layer two to get started with here, we want to go ahead and begin with by going ahead and placing down um, a row of two of narrow brick walls. They're going to be coming off those narrow brick, um, narrow brick uh, slabs there, kind of at an angle like so. We then want to go ahead and grab green terracotta. We're going to place down a row of two of green terracotta block struck behind that. On the insides here, we're going to place down a zombie head to both sides. And then we're going to take a dark oak signs and wrap them around the sides here of these narrow brick walls. So just like this to both sides. After that's done, in the center here, we're going to go ahead and then place down a row of three of dark prismarine slabs and then a row of three of dark prismarine full blocks. We're going to go then place down two green terracotta blocks out to both sides. At this point in time, we're going to go then place down a row of seven of green terracotta across, followed by a second row of seven, then a third, four, five, 
six, and seven rows of seven of green terracotta going all the way across. At this point in time, we would then take dark oak with trap doors, and all the way along the side here of the build, we'll place dark oak with trap doors and close them so they lay flat on the sides of the vehicle. Same thing will be done over here. So just like that. We're going to go then place down a dark oak with top sub here to both sides. Actually, rather, sorry, instead of a dark oak with uh, top sub, it's going to be a dark oak with ups down stair, and then a top sub coming off that stair. We're going to go then place down a dark oak with sign, like so, on the sides of those slabs. Same thing over here. And in the space in between here, we'll place down a row of five, or two rows of five of green terracotta to fill that space in. Then, at this section here, we're going to place down another row of five of green terracotta across. We're going to go and then grab ourselves a green shortcut box, place it on both ends. In that green shortcut box, we're going to place down an item frame and then a cobweb. And also, again, if you're on Java, we'll place a dark oak button on the side of the shortcut box as well for a bit of extra detail. With that done, we're going to go then place down two narrow brick stairs on top of those two narrow brick top slabs on the back there. In the space in the middle, we're going to take mossy cobblestone walls and we're just going to place down a row of three across. We then want to grab our... Um, Spruce slabs, we're going to place down a row of five across, followed by a wither skeleton skull on both ends, and then a row of five of spruce wood signs along the side there of said slabs. With that all complete there, that's going to wrap up what we have there for uh, layer number two, and take a look at it from above, this we should have for the top down view. With that though, we'll be moving on up to our next layer, layer number three. All right guys, moving into our next layer, we're moving into layer three. For layer three to get started with here, we're going to place down two dark oak trap doors, on top of these walls, and then we're gonna go and place down two daylight detectors going back from said trapdoors. We're gonna go and also just close the trapdoors like so. After that, we're gonna place down two spruce wood slabs to both sides. We're gonna go and then place down two pistons on both ends like that. And then in the center space here, we're just gonna place down a row of three of dark prismarine. After that is all done, we wanna go and then place down a dark liquid sign on the side here of these pistons. Now, one thing I do wanna mention here is that the pistons are gonna be a good block to place if you are on Java and you have access to commands. If you are not on Java, um, Bedrock or Pocket Edition, I would recommend instead of using these um, pistons to use our green, or not our green, but our end portal frames. Um, those will be a decent alternative for you guys to use. However, I prefer the look of the pistons so I'm going to go ahead and use the pistons here for this um, area but just keep in mind there is an alternative using the end stone the end portal frames um, instead of what we have here anyways after that though we're going to go ahead and then go to the sides we're going to place down a row of one two three four five six seven eight green shortcut boxes on the right side and the right side only the left side is going to be a little bit different it's going to be a row of seven so one two three four five six seven and then after that we're going to go and then place down a dark with top slam or rather, sorry, a dark liquid up sound stair, like so. We then want to go ahead and place down an item frame. Like that. In the item frame, we're going to go ahead and grab a black bed. We're going to place down a black bed that will be on its side. So, like so. And then a dark liquid sign. Like that, if you're on Java. Now, once we have that done, we're also going to go ahead and take our signs. And we're going to place them down all on the sides here, these green shortcut boxes. And we're going to go ahead and stop at the last two. So, like so. And over here on this side, same thing. So, one two, three, four, and five, and six. Signs back, so you have six on both sides like that. So you should have two green shulker boxes here and one like that without signs. After that's all done, we want to go then go to the inside here. We're going to take our green terracotta. We're going to place down one and two, one and two green terracotta. In the center space right here, we'll go ahead and grab ourselves a spruce wood trap door. We'll place down a spruce wood trap door like so. And we'll also take some black stained glass and we'll put a black stained glass block right behind it. We're going to go then take green terracotta and we'll just fill in the space here between our green shulker boxes completely to close this whole area off on the inside. Now there is uh, room for interior. Um, if you do want to do an interior yourself, you're more than welcome to. However, this tutorial here will not be including interior. Um, but we're going to go and stop at this point right here. Now at this point, we do want to go ahead and replace this green terracotta block with black concrete. And over here on the other side, we're going to go ahead and place down a green shulker box in this space here. So it should look like this here for the top down view. We're gonna go then place down our row three green shulker boxes across this space here, then a mossy cobblestone wall in both um, to both spots like that. We're gonna go then place down a spruce wood stair going back on both sides and then a spruce wood slab. After we have that done, we're gonna go ahead and grab black beds. We're gonna place down one and two black beds like so, and one and two like this on this side as well. In the middle space here, we're gonna go ahead and grab dark oak wood slabs and we're just gonna place down a row two of dark oak slabs in the center. 
We'll then take our green shulker boxes. We're going to place down two green shulker boxes with bottoms, bottom to bottom. Uh, they will be basically coming off those black beds like so. On the ends here, we're going to place down item frames like so. If you're on Java, we can also place down two item frames here on the inside as well. And then after that, we're going to go and grab dark group buttons, and we're just going to place down dark group buttons on these sides here of the shulker boxes like so to go and form the back. After that's all done, again, if you're on Java, we can go ahead and add a little bit of extra detail, which is going to be the brake lights. Now, right here, you can kind of pick and choose. Um, if you want the item frames on the fuel tanks here, you, you can put them. If you don't want the item frames and you rather have the brake lights available, you can also put those. But uh, we're going to have the item frames here coming off those slabs there with red stained glass in those um, fresh Java players. And again, you have to pick and choose here if you are on a different version um, of... Um, Minecraft. Um, and then also we can go ahead and grab a dark liquid sign. And again, for Java players, we'll place a dark liquid sign there on the end here just to kind of make the brake lights look a little bit cleaner there on the back. At least I think it looks cleaner. And with that out of the way, that is going to basically wrap up everything we have there for that. And at this point in time, I do also want to go ahead and for us Java players, we're going to type in the command slash give space at p Minecraft colon debug Spelt it wrong. That was the reason why. Debug underscore stick. By pressing enter, you'll get this glowing stick here. We then want to go to these pistons, and we want to left click until we get selected extended false. And we're just going to right click those until it says extended to true. And what it does there is it gets rid of that top wooden portion. It really helps with the front sloping there of our armor. But uh, yeah, that right there is pretty much it for what we have there for layer three. And with that, we'll be moving on up to layer number four. All right, guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer number four. For layer four, to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place a nice smooth sandstone top slab above this sprucewood trapdoor here. And then one more slab going forward. We're going to place down a birchwood sign on both sides of the slab right here, just like that. And then we're going to go then place down one, two dark oakwood slabs forward. On the sides here are these two dark oakwood slabs. We're going to go ahead and place down dark oakwood signs, like so. We then want to go ahead and place down two more dark oakwood slabs forward. And then another two. Off these last two ones here, we're going to go ahead and place down two dark oakwood signs to both sides. Continuing on, we're going to go ahead and place down another two dark oakwood slabs forward, and then a polished blackstone slab there on the very end for the barrel of our main gun. After that's done, we want to go ahead and then place down a dark prismarine block to both sides like so. We're going to go ahead and then go back from the smooth sandstone block with another smooth sandstone block here. And then a green terracotta block to both sides. Followed by a dark prismarine uh, slab or full block to both sides and then a zombie head like this coming off the side of that slab After that we're gonna go and take our green terracotta. We're gonna place down our row of five going all the way across We're gonna place down a dark oak up sound or sorry a polished black stone up sound stair to both sides With your skeleton skull coming off the front here or I should say the back and also on the top of that same thing over here And on the sides here of those stairs we're gonna place down a dark oak sign to both sides like so we then want to take our green terracotta, we're going to do another row of five all the way across. We're going to follow this up with a dark oakwood trap door, or dark oakwood uh, fence gate to both sides. Followed by another row of five of green terracotta going across the center there. There's going to be a dark oakwood top slab on the right side, and on the left side it's going to be a dark oakwood upside down stair. So a little bit different there. We're going to go then place down a dark oakwood upside down stair here in this spot here. Then one, two, three green terracotta blocks over, and then a dark oakwood top slab. We then want to just place down a row of three of dark oak top subs across the back here like so. After that's done, we want to go and then place down a uh, rail that will be on top of this black concrete block here. And then on top of this uh, shortcut box here, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves an item frame. We're going to place the item frame on top and a green terracotta block in the item frame. We also want to grab a green carpet and we're just going to place down a green carpet on top of this dark oak top sub here to kind of help keep that more consistent green color from the top down view. And with that all complete there, that is going to wrap up everything we have there for uh, layer number four for the build. And uh, with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into layer number five. Before we go ahead and move into layer five, I do want to go ahead and real quickly go to the front of the vehicle right here. We are going to go ahead and add a zombie head here to both sides like that for the little headlights there. And also a dark cuckoo button in the center there. So let's go ahead and make sure you throw that on right there. I did forget to add that, so just make sure that's added on. Anyways, going ahead and continuing on, on top of these two dark oak with top slabs here, we're going to place down two dark oak with trap doors, as well as two dark oak with buttons going forward, and then one, two, three, and four buttons going back. We're going to go then place down a birchwood pressure plate, followed by a birchwood trap door, and then we're going to place down a dark oak with button on both sides like that. Once we have uh, that all complete there, we want to go ahead and place down a daylight detector in the center, 
fall by a zombie head here to the side, make sure that trapdoor does remain closed. And then a dark oak trapdoor to this side, also closed like so. In the center here, we're going to place down a dark prismarine slab. And then we're going to place down a daylight detector to both ends, followed by a dark oak trapdoor, um, also to both sides, like so. So you should have something that looks like this here for the front of the vehicle so far. And then we're going to go ahead and place down a dark oak button like this on top of these um, dark prismarine uh, blocks. Now going ahead and continuing on, we're going to place down another dark prismarine full block located right here. And then right behind that, we're going to place down a green terracotta block. We're going to go ahead and take our dark oak stairs. We're going to place down a dark oak stair like so. And then going back from it, we're going to go ahead and grab a stripped spruce wood log. Place it here for the kind of... Uh, hatch up on top here, then another dark oak wood stair in this spot, and a daylight detector right here. Over here on the other side, we're going to go ahead and grab a prismarine stair, we're going to place down a prismarine stair like so, and then going back from that, we're going to place down a stripped, or just a normal spruce wood stair. And then we want to go and then grab ourselves a, short, or a smoker box, place that here, and then right behind that, a green terracotta block. Now, once we have that all finished, we're going to go ahead and grab spruce wood, and we're going to place down a spruce wood slab on top of these two stairs. Followed by a green zombie head coming off the side here of the smoker box. As well as a zombie head coming off this slab right here. Then after we have uh, that complete there, going ahead and continuing on. Uh, we're going to go ahead and first place down a dark oak wood fence post. That will be going up right here. And then we're going to go ahead and then place down a dark oak wood stair. Like this going back here. And there's going to be a, another stair located right here. So it should look like this. We're going to then place down two green terracotta blocks here. We're going to go ahead and then grab ourselves some shulker boxes. We're going to place down a shulker box like so. One here coming off this fence post and then a green terracotta block there in the center. Coming off these shulker boxes, we're going to place down a tripwire hook there on both sides like so. And with that all out of the way, that is going to pretty much wrap up the uh, layer 5 there. And with that, we'll be moving into our final layers here, which should be layers 6 through 10, in which we're just going to go in for all the uh, stuff on top of the turret and basically wrap up the build. So with that, let's go ahead and move on to our last final layers. Moving into our next layer, we have uh, layer 6 for 10. For these layers to go ahead and get started with, we're going to go ahead and begin with our machine gun here, which is going to be started with an anvil on top of the stair. Uh, we are going to have the uh, machine gun facing toward the rear. You can also uh, face it toward the front there by just going ahead and flipping the direction of the gun. So that is something you can definitely do as well, but it seems like most of the PT-91s, at least in their transit mode, are normally have their guns facing toward the rear. We're going to go ahead and place down a polished black stone top slab, as well as a dark oak sign on both sides of that top slab, like so. On the left side here of the anvil, so this side here, we're going to place down an item frame, and then a black bed in the item frame, which is going to be rotated, so it faces this direction here, pillow toward the front of the vehicle. And then a dark oak sign also inside there if you're on Java. On the other side, we're going to place down a green shulker box on its side, like so. And we'll grab some powered rail, and we're going to place down a powered rail on top of it, like that. Once we have that done, we're also going to place down a dark oak fence gate here, coming off this uh, anvil and opened up toward it. For the barrel itself, we're going to place down a end rod, chain, and on the very end here, uh, you can place down a wither skeleton skull, like that, for the gun. After that is all done up on top here, we're going to go ahead and also place down a zombie head on top of the uh, anvil, and we're also going to place down a stone button on top of this uh, slab here. We're going to go then take a dark oak fence post, and actually instead of having this sign here, we're actually going to place down a dark oak fence post instead. And going up from that fence post, we're going to go ahead and place down four iron bars up. So one, two, three, and four. We're going to go ahead and also do the same thing over here on top of this zombie head. So a fence post, and then four iron bars up. Like so. After that's all done, we want to go and then place down a dark oak fence gate here on top of this fence post. Open it toward the back there. We're going to place down an item frame. In that item frame, we're going to place down a red stained glass block. And after that, we're going to go then place down a dark oak wood sign coming off the fence gate, like so. After that is all done, we want to go and then grab our green carpet. And we're just going to place down a green carpet on top of this block here. As well as a item frame on top of this block. And a green terracotta block in the item frame, like so. And once we have that all complete there, that is going to pretty much wrap up my design here for the PT-9130. Hopefully you guys do enjoy this redesign of this uh, main battle tank and are able to put it to good use. If you do use this build, I do ask that you guys give proper credit for this being from a silent build to link to my channel or this video if this does appear on any social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for it, you're free to use it for a project you guys are working on. 
Um, overall, I um, enjoy the build, have fun with it, and all that fun stuff. With that, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Gary 204, and I'll see you guys next time.